Hello everyone, this is Errol, and welcome back to Sundown Moon Up Podfix. Today we'll be continuing Fuck Bullies by Random Weird Cat. Chapter 18 Izuku's eyes are closed. There's an echo. Is someone talking? It sounds like he's underwater. Is he drowning? Was he even near water? Did the Lee give up and just try and drown him? Izuku's, Izuku gasps and shoots up. He's already standing. He looks around and sees darkness surrounding him. The floors were gray and there were... Holy! Izuku would have jumped back if his feet weren't stuck to the ground by the green and black that was crawling up him. There were several pairs of eyes staring back at him. A yellow mist of a person stood close to him and two other people who looked like they were hiding in smoke. Izuku tries to speak and finds his mouth was covered. A man steps forward from the group and raises his head. I understand this is... stressful. You don't know us, and Toshinori hasn't told you everything yet. The white-haired man reaches out for him with both hands. The woman with black hair and a small mole on her chin throws her head back and laughs. That brat always worries too much. I told him to relax, but it seems he still hasn't taken my advice. The woman grins. The woman grin. The woman's grin falls into a soft smile as she reaches her gloved hand out with the others. You don't really know me, and you have no reason to trust any of us, but I ask, I need to ask a favor. The white-haired man gently grabs his cheeks and stands in front of him. Please, please, if you can help him, if you can bring him back from all that darkness, everything will change. The man presses their heads together and takes a deep breath. My brother is stubborn, but he always had a soft spot for certain types of people. You fall into that category. Toshinori's too angry to try, but if you can just... The man sighs and looks over his shoulder at the others. They smile back at him, and the bald one of the group gave a double thumbs up. You don't have to succeed. You don't even really have to try. If you don't want to do this, then that's completely okay. No one will be angry with you. No one will yell at you. Hands touch his shoulders and back. Izuku looks and sees a group of people... The group of people were suddenly smiling down at him. We, we all really, we, we all aren't really happy with you trying. I say, get the fuck. The bald one is elbowed by the man with a tall collar and a shirt, and shirt black hair, short black hair. All right, no cursing in front of the kid. I got it. Izuku looks back at the white-haired man with confusion. He mumbles out his words and tries to ask, "What exactly is he doing?" Beside is he doing beside help his he takes another look around and looks at each other each of the group members even the smoky ones an idea pops into his head about where he was just try and help kenji he likes you use that the white-haired man smiles and pats his head and tell him ashi says hi all members of the group spoke at the same time good luck izuku He sits up and screams. Finally, he can talk. A hand is on his chest. It's pushing him back down. He can't see. The people are gone now. Izuku, calm down. It's just a nightmare. Breathe. Arms wrap around him and Izuku clings to them. I don't understand. Izuku looks around and finds all for one above him. He tenses and finds his hands gripping the ends of the man's suit and collar. It's just a nightmare. Don't think about it. It's okay. All for one pats his hair down and it curls back up. I, I don't know how to how to help Kenji though. All for one releases Izuku and stumbles back. He's frowning and his hands are clenched. Where did you hear that name? All for one hisses. It's cold and scared. That can be right. Izuku wraps his arms around himself to stop the shaking. The the man with the white hair. He, I think he's Ashi. He told me to tell him hi, but I don't know. He bows his head and whimpers. All for one takes another step back. Ashi is... He can't be. It's just a quirk. One for all can only hold quirks and stalk them, not people. It can't be. All for one's hands are red and black. The screens around Izuku start to flicker and a few of them crack. Izuku slowly raises his head. All might told me about you and your your brother. Is Ashi? No. The walls tremble. 
Izuku flinches back and falls off the chair he sat on, one for all activated and green lightning surrounding him. All for one pants. Enough. He stomps toward Izuku, an image of Kanchan standing over him clouds his thoughts. Izuku lets out a scream. He curls up into himself and tries to disappear. One for all still crackles even though he wasn't even trying to activate it anymore. All for one stops with his hand, reaching for Izuku's head. The man takes a step back in his shoulder slump. Oh. Izuku was shaking and tears fell from his eyes. All for one quietly sits next to Izuku and leans back. His back hits the desk and he sighs. He reaches up to loosen his collar a little more. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you. You... Ashi is a very sensitive topic for me. I never should have yelled. Izuku's hands clench painfully in his hair. He stays curled up and refuses to look at all for one. I was going to try and make you realize. We'll have to take a rain check on that. He gently lays his hand on Izuku's back and rubs circles until the boy stops shaking. Chapter 19 Summary All for One versus All Might Kind of. It's more like All for One fucking All Might up and making him rethink life because, you know, that's what normal Dad for One does. His body was heavy. He felt as if his... He felt as if he was full of lead. Toshinori groans. He goes to sit up and finds his arms were heavier than normal. He opens his eyes and finds his wrist held together by cork suppressing cuffs. He looks around and sees All for One standing near the only door in the room. You almost look as bad as I do, All for One jokes. He takes a step forward. Toshinori swallows his fear. Compared to you, I look a thousand times better. Where is Izuku? You look like a skeleton. At least my body can hold itself together. All for One ignores his question and continues to poke his poke at his temper. You need life support mask. And you look like you need one. Where, do, where did your eyebrows go? All for One snorts. He walks towards him with slow steps. Toshinori leans further back into the wall. He pushes back further and further with every step. All for One kneels down in front of him. Out of all the people you could have given, given all, one for all to, you gave it to a depressed child who doesn't even understand that he was bullied. Did you look into Izuku before you chose him? Did you even ask him what his life was like? Did you ask if he was stable enough to take one for all? Toshinori's eyes wide, widen and his jaw falls open. He's being scolded by all for one. This son of a bi- I didn't- Toshinori stops before he really begins. All for one reaches out and slams his head into the wall behind him. Spots dance in his vision and he groans. There's a hand around his throat cutting off his air. You might be the stupidest user of my brother's quirk. All for one growls. He lets go of Toshinori and huffs. No one does background checks on their students in UA. I know he doesn't have any mental issues written down in his records, but there are signs for everything. Toshinori reeses and glares at the bastard in front of him. We do, but young Midoriya seemed okay. All for one slams his head into Toshinori's side and twists. Blood comes shooting out of his mouth as he screams. He thrashes and tries to kick at the villain. All for one's fingers dig into his old wound. Okay, he flinches when he hears anything loud. If you reach out to him, he flinches. He... The man stops himself. His mask seemed to be glaring at him. Young Midoriya is suicidal and is probably only alive because of you gave him one for all and he doesn't want to let you down. He spits out the words like they were venom and they sink into Yagi. Toshinori thinks about Izuku running to save Bakugo when it was suicidal, trying to help Todoroki with using his fire even though he would have gotten hurt or killed if his neck had hit the concrete and a little harder, running to save Ida from staying even though he could have died. All for one squeezes tighter and Yaki jolts up. His chest throbs and his throat ached. You're terrible. How could Izuku, Izuku's own mentor not pay attention to anything that involves him? It's a shame you got to him first, but it's also a good thing. The poor boy would have killed himself if he hadn't met you. All for one pulls back. Toshinori thinks back to when he told Izuku he couldn't be a hero in a very harsh way, and his thoughts linger on how broken Izuku looked. God. Almost. Try again. 
All four lets go with blood on his fingertips. He takes a handkerchief out of his jacket and wipes the blood off. Toshinori almost thanked the man for hurting him. He felt like he needed to be hurt for not noticing earlier when he first met him, or for the months that they trained. Alphorn backs up and places the bloody handkerchief back into his jacket. When Nana Shimura gave you one for all, wasn't that stressful? Toshinori brings his head up and looks at Alphorn. What? He didn't even feel angry at the man as the man spoke her name. It was stressful having one for all and knowing you had to fight me after I killed Nana Shimura. It was stressful learning how to use it and how to survive while I was still out there. Toshinori slowly nods. He ignored the feeling in his throat. What do you think it feels like for Izuku? You haven't even told him everything and he's stressed with school, with friends, with his life. Having the number one hero come to you with a quirk that has amazing power, wouldn't you feel pressured? I know you by now. You had to have given Izuku a long speech or something, but if your favorite hero did that, wouldn't you feel pressured to say yes? To train for that quirk feels like feels like you're signing a death warrant i can't imagine the stress he's under by the end of all for one's rant toshinori feels like sobbing he tried to swallow the lump in the back of his throat but it kept bobbing back up making him feel like he can't breathe izuku needs to stay with me i'll will keep him safe all for one walks towards the door and reaches for the handle he opens it and stood in the doorway Toshinori goes to stand up. The pain in his chest stops him. Blood leaks from the corners of his mouth as he frowns. We were going to help him. We we can help him. Just let him go, please. He needs therapy and is... Off one slams the door shut. A loud bang makes Yagi flinch back as he cr into his curled position. Therapy can only do so much. He's He can't even... I don't even know why I'm trying to talk to you. You heroes are the worst. You didn't even know what was going on and you think therapy is going to help? We're trying to fix everything. We had the meeting set up. We were going to expel Bakugo. Toshinori screams back and he got his uh, and he got on to his knees. Alphawan throws his head and hands in the air. He never should have been accepted in the first place. His behavior is just like Endeavor's. Another roach you allowed to slip in. He grabs the handles and throws it up. He stomps through the door. He grabs the handle and throws it open. He stomps through the door and slams it shut behind him. Toshinori sinks down. Izuku. He's left alone with his thoughts. The pain in his chest makes him curl up and, and, and his thoughts make him sob. His boy is suffering because another thought makes him freeze. Night Eye reminded him of his death before, he, before they went to save Hitoshi and Izuku. Was this it? Was he not going to save Izuku? All right, everyone. That is the end of chapters 18 and 19. This is going to get a little traumatizing for Yagi as he's been captured at the moment. So prepare yourselves for that. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you all soon. Bye.